It's been said that women initiate the majority of divorces. And why do they do that? I've been watching these videos lately um, about the betaization of men. Men start out being, you know, like these alpha guys that women want. And then they're beta betaized over a thousand cuts by con continuously um, kind of being a doormat to the woman or doing things that are not really manly enough. So she loses respect for him or something like that. And I just want to give you guys my opinion on that. Um, just from my own experience, which is going to be different from those other people. And apparently, you know, if um, men start saying yes to things that they don't really want to do, they end up become they end up going from the the prize or the pet to the plow ho plow horse, <laughs> and then the woman's like leaves him and fucks Chad, fuck boy or something. I don't know. So this is what I think. I was married twenty five years. I there were times I hated my husband. I'm going to say that I would hate him a lot. I would say I never disrespected him, but I would hate him. I would hate him when he was walking around angry, when he hated his job and wouldn't make a change in his job. Um, but I never hated him for not helping more with the housework. We had a very traditional marriage where I did stuff with the kids and he did stuff outside the house and he worked and he was the provider. Now, um, and I was fine with that. I have listened to Esther Perel talk about how to maintain desire in a long-term relationship. And she mentions the same thing that Khalil Gibran talks about in his chapter on marriage and the prophet, which is that you need space. You need space in a relationship. Kind of what Richard Cooper talks about too, that um, you want a woman in your frame and it's easier to keep your frame if you're not living together. You have some distance. But you definitely can keep distance when you're living together. My ex-husband and I did that very well because he had his interests and I had my interests. He was, you know, one place during the day. I was another place during the day. And on weekends, we didn't really do that much together. And I liked it that way. I do not like a man who is my doormat, who is people pleasing me, who is afraid of me. That's one other thing I would get mad at him about when he seemed like he was afraid of me or he wouldn't confront me. I didn't like that. But that wasn't such a big deal as when I would get mad at him for some other things. Um... I think having distance between people is really good. Taking separate vacations, having separate interests, having separate friends. Because then there's always newness when you come back together. You're not overly attached. But I would say I was securely attached. I wasn't needy and he wasn't needy. And he would tell me no to things. And I would tell him no to things. And so there were certain areas where I was aware when I got my way. I was aware when he got his way and I had to compromise, especially in the houses we lived in. I, I always compromised on that. When it came to what to do with the kids, he compromised on that. I got my way. And then there were times when um, I guess we both got our way or neither one of us got our way. <laughs> the reason I ended up leaving him, though, is that I think it's important for men. You have to nurture the relationship. Okay, you have to nurture your relationship. You have to keep courting your partner. You have to keep looking good for your partner. You have to make sure the sex is still good and very frequent. And while we both stayed looking good for each other and we were exercising and we, um, we didn't do, he didn't do, and I'm not going to say that he was a bad person. Maybe he just didn't want to do that with me. He didn't want to do the date nights. He was frugal. He was frugal. He didn't want to do the, and he didn't want to do, vac he, we never took a vacation, just him and me ever, until like the last year. He never wanted to do that. Um, but that didn't make me mad. 
but I think that's not even what made me mad. That hurt my feelings a little bit. But the thing that made me finally leave him, the thing that I couldn't uh, take anymore was our sex life was very dissatisfying. Our sex life was very dissatisfying. And I, I write about that in my book. I don't want to go into it here. And it left me when the kids were older, I was no longer okay with it being dissatisfying. And I was intent on improving that and he wasn't on board with it. So I just didn't want it anymore. But I would say that the entire time I still desired him, even till the night I left him, I desired him. I desired him. And it's because if he didn't want to have sex with me, he would tell me no. And if he didn't want to do this or he didn't want to do that sexually, he would tell me no. And I, I had too many no's, but I'm so glad he told me no. And I'll tell you why. He told me no when he was a no. It made it ensured that I kept respecting him. And it signaled that we were not right for each other or that this era in our life wasn't a match. I think it's important if you want your woman to respect you and God, also I think if you want your, your guy to respect you, you have to say no when you're a no. We have to keep our differences and our separateness intact. We have to keep that because that gives us, like Esther Perel says, a bridge to cross, a bridge to cross. And she said that when she asked couples, you know, she asked a partner, when do you find your spouse most attractive? It's always when, you know, when I see him playing with the kids or when I see him giving a speech or when I see her, you know, playing tennis with her friends, seeing someone in their joy and observing them from a distance and having that separation builds attraction. I don't, I'll tell you, <laughs> one of my pet peeves was Mike's husband used to love doing the dishes and I'd be like fuck the dishes fuck me instead like forget the fucking dishes I do not want my guy to be a housewife or a maid or a servant I like the idea of a man that wants to get pleasure out of doing things for me but I like a man who does manly things like rides a motorcycle maybe or does projects around the house or plays soccer or basketball with the guys or um, whatever, Ra racist cars. I don't know, like manly things. I don't want a guy doing housework, but this again goes into, you know, a lot of men do if the woman works and the guy works. And now they're both doing housework and now he's domesticated and he's not so sexy anymore. I don't think so. I guess some women feel like their husband is more sexy when he helps. But I don't think there's anything sexy about me telling a guy, because um, the woman usually is in charge of the household and she sees what needs to be done. Um, treating him like an employee or a servant and having him do things, I don't find that attractive myself. Uh, maybe some people do. I think that I was watching a video earlier today about the betaization of men and this young man who has that channel was saying he attributes it to social media. Young people nowadays are just getting to know each other over social media, over dating apps, and men no longer have to get out of their comfort zone and use their masculine energy to approach a woman. And there could be something to that, that um, a man picking up the phone to talk to a woman is very unusual anymore. I could see that. I could see that. Um, men's testosterone levels are declining. And also, I think that um, women now want men to have more feelings. And men want women to be financially independent. So women are uh, taking on more masculine attributes. Men are taking on more feminine attributes. But I think it's really important to stay in our core energy and for me to stay in my feminine energy, I can't work full time and I don't want to work full time. And I don't think that women necessarily um, should be forced to work full time. 
I know when I had my period, I just wanted to stay home and put my feet up. And I think that in Ayurveda, that's the appropriate thing to do for our health is when we have all that cramping. Um, it's the same cramping. The uterus is cramping like during birth, but not as painful to force all that that uterine lining out it's painful and can cause a lot of lower back ache and bloating and a lot of pain and the best thing to do is just to rest and use a heating pad and take hot baths not to you know stick in change your tampon every 45 minutes take a mydol and go for a, um, a marathon run that's totally out of sync with our bodies in my opinion another thing i want to say on here i don't even know if i want to be a coach I do not want fucking funnels. I do not want email funnels. I don't want, you know, I don't want to do all that BS marketing. And I don't want to have a fucking niche. Uh, in business, you have to have a niche. I uh, I don't know if I want to do it. I'm just going to make the keep making videos the way that I want to make the videos. And then I'll decide, you know, uh, one of my other interests has always been in finance and um, dealing with numbers and money. I used, I did all the investing in our marriage. I'm, I have an interest in that. Um, maybe I'd like to work in the financial sector, get a part-time job somewhere and get out of the house and work with other people in a corporate setting. I always liked wearing my suits and being in a corporate environment and being in meetings. So maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I have to think about it. Um, anyway, this video was supposed to be mainly about men becoming more feminized and how that, I think, leads to the downfall of the sexual attraction in a relationship. And when women lose their sexual attraction, they're not going to want to fuck their guy anymore. Maybe they'll cheat. Maybe they'll leave. But I think cheating has to do with your mindset and what you saw your parents do. Uh, not all people cheat. Not all men cheat and not all women cheat. I'm convinced of that. But some people seem to keep getting the cheaters. I have also heard that 90% of the women want the top 10% of men. And that's true. That's why women are complaining about no good men out there. What's a good man? He's got to be hot. He's got to dress reasonably well. He's got to be fit. He's got to have something going on and have some finances to his name. And unfortunately, a lot of guys just sit at their desk and become slovenly large and they're not attractive. And women want attractive men. When they're online going through the things, they're looking for the hottest guys. I know I do. I know there are women who say they don't care how a guy looks or a guy becomes more attractive when you get to know him. But even with that, um, I think that he still has to dress well and have like some game or something going on. So if there are any men listening and you're not getting any women, I suggest that you pursue your excellence, get in shape, go to Nordstrom or somewhere or a men's store and Figure out how to get something in style, like dress, uh, you know, get a decent pair of shoes. Don't want to go around in tennis shoes and wear clothes that are fitted and tight. And uh, ladies, definitely, men definitely care about our figures. There are men that like big women, but mostly men like a woman who's got a nice figure that's fit and in shape. I would suggest, you know working out a little bit more getting off your ass moving your body and but you know we're not here to serve men but if you want a man you know that's what they like they like a halfway decent body and I think most men like younger women although there are exceptions to everything so I kind of made peace with I made peace with the fact that I'm going to be single forever. I'm not going to give free pussy to some young fuck boy. Um, I think that men should pay for it or, or um, give us something for it. I, I don't want to do it for free. I think that, that men, this is why, I think that men enjoy casual sex way more than a woman. A guy can stick his dick in your pussy and he can come. I'm not going to come off a guy's cock. It's going to take a lot more than that.
So why would I want to ride a stick? What's in it for me? I can ride my dildo. What's in it for me? You know, unless he's super hot and he's a trophy fuck. Maybe. But I don't like the way that men can so easily fuck me and discard me. I don't like that. That's why I don't hook up anymore. That's what they can do. So, <laughs> this is a random collection of thoughts. Um, by the way, I... Um, I remembered I bought these Christmas earrings last year, I think. So, a little Christmas time here. And um, if you have any topics you want me to cover, just send me an email and I will make a video on it.